This is your one and only Fire Spark 81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and welcome back to Grounded. Today, we are going to talk about five awesome features in Grounded. Let's get to it. The first thing is the ability to craft items needed for a recipe without going through a bunch of other menus and other shenanigans. You can see here that we are missing some woven fiber. In order to craft that, all I have to do is click it. See how it's highlighted now? And then down here, I just click craft. Bam, there you go. Now we have woven fiber. Now if I wanna craft my ax, I just click back up here to my ax and then craft and equip all in one button. Just click it, done, and now we have our ax. Absolutely amazing features right there that are missing in so many survival games. The next really cool feature is building in this game. Building is amazing in this game and so well thought out and intuitive. So we go here to our build menu. We have different options here. We're gonna pick a wall so I can rotate the wall with my middle mouse button. You can see there's an arrow showing me where the front is. I can also use Q and E to rotate it as well. Once I have it where I want it, I place it. And you just build with the blueprint so you can map out your build the way you want it so you're not wasting time and effort building something then deciding you don't like it and then having to destroy it all and only get a fraction of your resources back in order to build it again the other thing is building is so super creative and free flowing. You can see here, you got a lot of different options for snap points. You see it snaps there. I can move it down a little bit to snap it there. We can do all of that. We can go back into our build menu and pick our ceiling and look at all the different places here that the ceiling snaps to. So we can choose to snap it in the middle here like so. And there you go. Now you have a ceiling on both sides of your wall. We can go back into our wall and then we can then move the wall to here and snap it and there you have a ceiling piece sticking through your wall absolutely amazing stuff then after that building is quick and easy you just grab a couple of whatever you need to build with and just start throwing it down onto the structure or the blueprints that you've already mapped out so you could literally build your entire structure out of these blueprints and then you or you and your friends can just throw it up quickly quick and easy after you've already decided on how you want your structure to look. The next really cool feature is the active environment. And what that means is things interact with each other. You can see here these ants are chasing down and attacking this weevil. And you can also use this active environment to your own benefit by getting larger bugs that are hard to kill to attack each other. So if we hit this ladybug here, and sometimes this works better than others, uh, it's a trial and error type thing, but we're gonna try to get this ladybug's attention and see if we can kite it over here. Okay, so I've managed to kite the ladybug. Now the next thing to do is to kite a stink bug. And if we get those two side by side, and the stink bugs start doing this shenanigans here, they will anger the ladybug because the ladybug will start taking damage. So let's see if we can grab the ladybug again and grab the stink bug. Here we go. We got the two of them side by side. We got to make sure we don't get bulldozed by the ladybug. And now that we've got them together, if we just get them to damage each other, they will start fighting. So here we go. Now the stink bug is going to do its thing. Now we just step back out of the cloud. And if we get far enough away, we break aggro. And now we take a look. You can see that the stink bug and the ladybug are fighting. If you look through, let me see if I can get you a good view here. There you go. You can see there through the green cloud that they are going at it. So now that the ladybug has killed this stink bug, we can talk about the next really cool feature, which is the nonlinear tech tree. So the tech tree just unlocks stuff as you get new things. So there you go. We just did that. We got some stink bug parts and then we can take those back to our research station. And you can see that we unlocked the gas arrow and the gas mask. But if we take those back over to the research station and scan those parts, we have the chance to unlock even more things. So here we are at the research station. These are dotted all over the map and they allow you to analyze things and unlock new recipes. So we have the feelers here. We can analyze those and these build charge over time. So you kind of have to either wait for the charge or you have to um, find 
find another one. You can see we just unlocked the insect hammer. We can also scan the gas sack as well and maybe we'll get some new stuff. Maybe we won't. You don't know until you actually scan it. Yeah, see we didn't get anything new on this one because we already knew the gas mask. But this works for everything in the game. Just finding the resources, you will unlock some things and also bringing them back to the analyzer. You can unlock new things. There's nothing to stop you progression wise. It, you just use your own creativity to get said resources. And if you can get them, it doesn't matter how far you are in the game. And last but not least, we have map scale in verticality. And what I mean by map scale, not just the map is large because it is a pretty big map, but the scale in which you are playing in and the perception of everything. Now, a lot of these things vary like the uh, can here. We can go up and we can get inside the can and we can build inside of it and it's really cool. And it's really no different than if you were to say go inside of a cave in a normal game. But the perception of it, because it's a can, it just makes it that much cooler. It's a can, it's not a cave. It's just falling out here in the middle of nowhere. On top of that, you have the verticality of the map and you can just climb on all the different plants as you see here. We can climb up this blade of grass. There's a lot of other plants that you can just jump on. There's bushes as we get closer to the house. There's berry bushes that you can climb up inside of and build on. And it's just really neat to be able to do all of that. And like I said, you can do stuff like that in other games, but it's the scale and being shrunk down. It's really neat. And it's the first game that I've seen like this. I don't think there's any other survival games like this that shrink you down. This is really awesome and really neat to play in. And it has a really good feeling to it. All right, well, I just wanted to talk about these things because I thought they were really cool features and I really like them and it gets me really excited for the full release of the game and I'm hoping that it gets you excited as well. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Leaker Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.